let's do some practice problems about number five. That looks good. Um, <clears throat> So I'll just use this unit circle that I pulled off of uh, Google Images, and uh, it's not looking so good, but you can read it. It's it's legible. Um, so it says there's this T, and this T is pi over 4, and it's clearly radians because it's not degrees. There's no degree symbol there. So they want us to find the point x, y on the unit circle that corresponds to this real number T. So this real number T, pi over 4, is, we can see here, uh, it's pi over 4 radians, 45 degrees. The, the x comma y is root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. And there it is. Um, do another one, number 10, um, where t is 5 pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3, here's a pi over 3, a single pi over 3. A, a, like a unit of 60 degrees, you can think of it that way. Here's pi over 3, so double that, and we're over at 2 pi over 3. Triple that, we're at 3 pi over 3, but that simplifies down to pi. 4 pi over 3 is right there, and 5 pi over 3 is right here. So here's 5 pi over 3, just like we were looking for. The x comma y is 1 half comma negative root 3 over 2. So there we go. Um, now let's move on to number 24. Um, evaluate a possible the sine, cosine, and tangent of uh, this number, 11 pi over 6. t equals 11 pi over 6. Okay, so the cosine of 11 pi over 6, can we find it? Well, let's see, here's 11 pi over 6. The cosine, oh, they made a nice little uh, side note for us, that the cosine is the x value, right? It's the cosine of a point on the plane is x, x over r, and r is always 1 on the unit circle. It's one unit. Uh, that's why it's called the unit circle. Uh, so the cosine of 11 pi over 6 is this first value. That's root 3 over 2. Uh, the sine of 11 pi over 6. Well, that's that other value. That's negative 1 half. The tangent of 11 pi over 6 is, you can either look at it as sine over cosine or y over x, but in any case, it's negative 1 half over root 3 over 2. Okay, when we divide by a fraction, we want to multiply by the reciprocal, so we'll do negative 1 half times root 3 over 2, or not root 3 over 2, 2 over root 3. Okay, those cancel out. We're left with negative 1 over root 3. We've done this enough times, I think, to, uh, to do it without too much trouble. We're going to rationalize the denominator, multiply the, de the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3, so we get negative root 3 over 3. So that's the tangent. Um, let's do that one more time. Number 28. Um, t is now negative 4 pi over 3. Okay, so the, let's say the sine this time first. Sine of negative 4 pi over 3. Well, first we have to find negative 4 pi over 3, but this is the great thing about the unit circle. We just need to be able to count in the, the radians or the degrees that we're, we're looking at. So here is, this is pi over 3. This is positive pi over 3. So this would be negative pi over 3, negative 2, 3, 4. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4 pi over 3. Negative 4 pi over 3 is right there. So it's coterminal with 2 pi over 3, and it'll have the same sign and cosine. So the sign is negative 1 half. And the cosine, sorry, the sine is root 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of negative 4 pi over 3, that's the x value you see. That's negative 1 half. All right. The tangent is going to be sine over cosine. That's going to be root 3 over 2 
over negative 1 half. So that's going to be root 3 over 2 times negative 2 over 1. 2's cancel, so we're left with negative root 3. And there we go. That is, uh, that's a sine, cosine, and tangent of negative 4 pi over 3. Um, next, we'll go on to 36. And let's see, we want to find all six trigonometric functions of the real number. So we'll need that. Um, number 36. t is negative 7 pi over 4. So if we want all six, uh, well first we know that the sine 7 uh, pi, 7 pi over 3, or 4, 7 pi over 4, negative 7 pi over 4. So uh, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7 pi over 4. Uh, you could also think that a full re revolution would be negative 8 pi over 4, because that would simplify to negative 2 pi, and 1 pi over 4 short of that would be negative 7 pi over 4 whatever. However you find it, there it is, negative 7 pi over 4. So the sine of negative 7 pi over 4 is going to be uh, root 2 over 2. The cosine of negative 7 pi over 4 is also going to be root 2 over 2. Uh, the tangent of negative 7 pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2 well that's just like 5 divided by 5 or 7 divided by 7 or anything divided by itself that's just 1 alright so the sine has this uh, reciprocal relationship with the cosecant the cosecant of negative 7 pi over 4 is going to be 1 over root 2 over 2, or it's going to be the reciprocal of root 2 over 2, which is 2 over root 2. We want to multiply by the reciprocal, or we want to um, rationalize the denominator, so we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. We get 2 root 2 over 2, the 2's can cancel, and we just have the square root of 2. And the, cos the cosine and the secant have a reciprocal relationship. And seeing as we just did this, we just did 2 over root 2, which is what the secant would be, we know that it's also going to be the square root of 2. And the cotangent of negative 7 pi over 4, pi over 4, would be 1 over 1, or 1. The reciprocal of 1 is just 1, because the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. Okay. Uh, now we'll go on to 39. <laughs> So the cosine of 8 pi over 3. So it says, we talked about this, the period of sine and cosine. We want to evaluate the cosine of, um, of 8 pi over 3 using the fact that we know the cosine of any angle on the unit circle. Um, so if you look for 8 pi over 3, you'll see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6. 6 pi over 3, or 2 pi, is like the highest that it goes. It doesn't go beyond that as far as numbers that are written down. Um, you could keep going and count it off, but that's not exactly what it says. Um, we're going to use the period as an aid. So what we'll do is write 8 pi over 3 as uh, basically 2 pi plus some other angle, and since cosine has a period of 2 pi, if you just add 2 pi or a multiple of 2 pi onto whatever this angle is, then your cosine is still the same as whatever that angle is. Okay, so let's do a couple things here. We're not going to want to add 2 pi, we're going to want to add uh, 2 pi but with a, a denominator of 3, so it's going to be a 6 pi over 3, so this is the same as 2 pi, plus 
Well, 6 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3 would be 8 pi over 3. Okay? And since it's periodic, uh, 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi plus 6 pi over 3, whatever, you go around a full revolution, you still you wind up at 2 pi over 3. Let me show you on the unit circle what, what that looks like. Here's 2 pi over 3. If we were to add 6 pi over 3 or 2 pi or a full revolution, here we go all the way around, you could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pi over 3, and we're right back where we started with the same cosine, same sign. So the cosine of 8 pi over 3 is equal to the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Okay, so the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is the same as the cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus a full revolution, so it's the same as the cosine of 8 pi over 3, so the cosine of 8 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. That's what they're talking about when they say use the period as an aid. Alright, now we'll go on to 48 and we're going to use these uh, properties, or, well, properties of sine and cosine that we observe easily on the unit circle. Um, I'll talk about that more in just a second. Um, so the sine of negative t is 3 eighths. Um, so we want to find the sine of positive t. Um, so if you remember from the, well, I won't even remind you of that. I'll just show you on here. So here is a, um, an angle, t, we could call it. An angle, 60 degrees, pi over 3 radians, whatever. And the sine is root 3 over 2. So that would be positive, the positive version of that angle. The negative, in this direction, negative 5 over 3, has the same sign as the exact same, except it's actually exact opposite. Right? This is positive and this is negative. So in general, I'm going to bring in our light blue cloud of memory. If we have the sine of t, okay, well that's going to be equal to the sine of negative t, except for it'll be the exact opposite. So the sine of t is equal to the negative of the sine of negative t. So this sine right here is the opposite of this sine, which this angle is the negative of that angle. So the sine of negative t is equal to 3 eighths. So part a to number 48. If this is negative t, so negative t is somewhere down here, and the sine is 3 eighths, uh, so I would, I would guess that negative t would actually take you around somewhere over here, because this is where you find positive sine values. So all the way up in here, apparently, uh, is, is some uh, angle that has a sine of 3 eighths. Um, so if we were to go to the positive value of that angle, come all the way around and pass the horizontal in just a little bit more, just like we did with the, the negative version, we're going to have the exact opposite. So the sine of positive t is going to be equal to negative 3 eighths. It's just going to be the exact opposite. Part b, they want us to find the cosecant. The cosecant and the sine have a reciprocal relationship. Uh, so the cosecant of positive t would just be the reciprocal of the sine of positive t, so negative 8 thirds. So that's part a and b of 48. Um, I'll do two more. We're going to start at 54. Okay, this has got to be the easiest part. Here's the thing about the sine of 11 pi over 9. When you go to find pi over 9, you won't see it on the unit circle, not written down at least. Um, if you look for it, uh, you know, pi over 9 will be uh, you know, somewhere in here um, because it's a ninth of pi. It's there. It's just we haven't written it down. So if you haven't written it down, um, then we're not going to bother committing it to memory. So we're just going to open up our calculator. So we're going to ask what the sine of 11 pi over 9 is. All right. And before we hit enter, we want to make sure that the calculator knows we're talking about radians and not degrees. So we go to the mode. It is on radians, so that's good. And we'll hit enter, and we see negative, let's do this. Um, 
always see it. Uh, this is negative 0.6428. I believe it said four decimal places. Yeah, it did. Uh, let's see, evaluate the trigonometric expression. That's all we're trying to do. So then we'll do 62, just one more. Uh, the sine of negative 13.4. Now you don't see a pi here, so you might be tempted to go to degrees, but you don't see a degree symbol here. So it's still in radians. It's just negative 13.4 radians. So we'll do the sine of negative 13.4. We already made sure that we're in radian mode, so we'll hit enter and negative 0.7404 if we round that 3 to a 4. Okay. Uh, that'll do it. That's uh, all about the unit circle. Let me know if you need any help with anything. Thanks for watching.